Welcome back to Seven Shades of Mercury. We're surely going to be the final episode of this Hammerite Imperium mission. As we are entering the Grand Library and uh, trying to get the purple team's icon. If thou fallest off the second floor staircase due to slipping, then thou hast failed the builder. As an acolyte of the Empire, shouldst be prepared and ever vigilant at all times. Install some damn railings, you cheap ass bloated cravens. You should look where you're going instead of ogling the female acolytes, idiot. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. My spiritual sense is tingling. Fine, it's just, just somebody it's dropping. Big rat with a sword. Yeah, just a big rat with a sword. You know, you know how it is. Great men of history and key figures of this age, Volume 2. The Metal Order, Ferramurus. Many Ferramurus name themselves in the old tongue in the manner of the island from which they come. They also have a queer tradition for numbering their ancestral relations. Ancipius I, the first Ferramurus of renown and regarded by some as the true father of the order, as many technological advancements and principles are attributed to him. He was said to have had a vision of, the, of an anvil blazing him in the womb of the earth before he made his renowned advancements in the field of transportation technology. His ancient treasured orb is on display in the Athelonian Imperial Museum. Aclespian VI. Under the command of this Ferrum general, the famous wall of, walls of Gilatius, stretching all around the province of Darkmere, were completed. Councillor Glorski, the first Ferrum figure of note not to have been born on the famous isle, Councillor Glosky nonetheless won many admirers through his plans for industrious process. His first book, Terror Lines, drew much attention to Glos Glosky, Glosky's resource management skills, and with some help from the best Hammerite minds of this age, was able to bring the Imperium to its present state of might and majesty. Chancellor Zinni II, credited with inventing gunpowder. Chancellor Protunsky I, creator of the firm magnetic train carrier, the fastest and most cost-effective transportation in the Empire. Alexander, the last Ferrum Royalist who set up a solid alliance between the Imperial troops and the Ferrum Army of Iron. Valtero. Much has been written of the young, charismatic Valtero as he began a new era of industry that appeared to rival even that of Ch uh, Councillor Gorski. His advancements in aviation and electrical energy harnessing seem destined to have a prodigious impact, though heretical rumours persist of his theft of ideas from alchemist sources. Speaking of alchemist sources, did we ever find the alchemist chapel? Oh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just a. Uh, there was a, there was an icon on the wall, for prayer and and whatever. I oh, saw something up there. Hmm. I love books. Such pretty covers. How are we gonna get around here safely? I mean, we might be able to turn these lamps off, I don't know. Oh, this is Thief 2. I can't make that jump, can I? Oh! Well, distance-wise, yes. <gasps> okay. That's how it was supposed to have gone. Right, oh yeah, these corners are plenty big enough to hide in. By the builder, come out. Nay. Because he's stairs. I don't love this place. It's Far too brightly lit. <laughs> the 
precursors are not simply the priests of the Imperial world, though they are often mistaken as such. Though it is true that many priests find their true vocation in the Precursor Order due to the scholastic and pastoral work involved, the Precursors are also strongly represented in the Council. Their origins are twinned with our own Hammerite Empire, but where they diverge is usually in the field of education. Their style is customarily unique, employing meditation as opposed to prayer, and they can become most admirable ambassadors on the strength of their personality. They achieve most recognition when the Empire is threatened in a religious and or theistic fashion, often directing the hammers on these occasions. Not content with mere worship, they achieve much through gesture, communication, and study. When threatened, they are trained to fight in all manner of methods to confuse, defeat, and above all, to educate the enemy. As the Precursors have their roots in ancient history and have not contributed as a whole to any singular part of recent Imperial history, but rather in isolated battle situations, they tend to be regarded as an archaic order. And though their slow methods often complement that of the Faramurus, with whom they have conquered much ground in the north and east. Precursors are generally considered to be quiet and perceptive. They're not as passionate as the Hammerite Order, they are moved by any great gesture or deed. When won, their loyalty is to be much favoured, but their friendship is not so readily sought after, as the Precursors are amongst the most humorless and misanthropic of all orders, hating even momentary distractions from their work. On their shoulders is placed the history of the world, and they take this and other responsibilities with a typically saturnine resolve. They are commonly to be found on their own, favouring independent action over group effort, but are quick to gather when called upon to do so due to excellent organisation. Okay. Don't come this way, man. At least the guy, these guys aren't carrying lamps, right? I love books. Such pretty colours. From a dark time of the Precursors cometh this spell that maketh thee seem a mighty mage who can manipulate the fabric of time itself. This time warp spell for slowing thine enemies is a labyrinthine and powerful one. Nay, the spell doth not slow time down, or that would be pure fictional madness. Rather, it sloweth the brain impulses of the living target, thus making his responses thrice as slow. Now it hath been condensed into scroll form for ease of use. Ponder thee on all the wondrous purposes it couldst have, such as beating thy partner in chess. Assuredly he would have no time for his moves. Warning, does not always work against mages. Well, those would have been useful against some of the uh, black guys or, or silver guys, maybe. Great men of history and key figures of this age, William III. The Alchemist Order. Rapaldo Bourgeonese. The first alchemist ever to deign to speak to the Hammers is regarded to this day as an enlightened gentleman with impeccable manners. Much of the Athelonian's perceptions are the good features of the alchemists derived from his influence. Before then, it was generally thought that each side had nothing to say to one another. His friendship with certain Shadow Order representatives has since changed this outlook. Leonardo Racomello, the current Imperial Alchemist Counselor, is renowned as a very stoic man. Some describe him as stiff, and makes great use of the quoted sayings of Rapallo. His expertise, however, sets him apart, as, unlike his predecessor, he appears more capable of translating many of the ideas behind the alchemist's learning and devices. Though many of the Metal Order consider him evasive and unhelpful, he has proven his worth to the Emperor by rescuing a legion from the grasp of dark myriad beings with a classified chemical substance known as Zeta-2. However, he continues to refuse submitting this to the Metal Order. The Precur Precursors Dotus Uxkabar the famous hero priest of Saftiona, who formulated much Hammerite doctrine during his travels to the furthest reaches of the Imperium. Dotus is, to this day, credited with more discoveries about the Ages of Darkness than any other individual. Not only this, but he also laid the foundations for the Empire by gathering intelligence during his contact with natives of other isles and regions. Gabriel Farquhar Initially a scribe at the Imperial Palace, Brother Farquhar contributed a great deal of the art that is seen on the walls of the Great Cathedral of saintly Cardinal Illustrious. At times of war, he fearlessly set out to record any conflict in as much detail as possible. Though mo mocked in some quarters for this relentless and seemingly needless pursuit, his skill was so renowned that it coined the phrase doing a farkar, i.e. risking much for mere elaboration. During the siege of Saftiona, Gabriel rode out with a full armory and dispatched almost an entire unit with his weapon mastery in the single pursuit of gaining a vantage point from which he could record the burning east tower of a precursor temple and recover some minor artifacts. Alright, 
I thought I was in the light there, so I was a bit worried, but no. Also, I don't know if this is a noisy floor or not, but surely, right? What's well, a different style of floor? Yes, it's noisy. I think one I coin. trial step. I, an coin and it said we would win. I mean, you guys have a lot of icons to capture so, if you're really going to win. But on the other hand, I love all the ones you need to capture are only a few feet away from you, so... Where is this guy going? I love Shivan, I know it's you. Shit. I love books. Such pretty colors. Extra vigilant. Eye of the tiger. I flicked an imperial coin and it said we would win. He reacted when I tried to pickpocket him. That shouldn't be happening. He shouldn't have known I was there. <sighs> Lucky you didn't find me, that was very close. How am I going to get past him? Is he just going to come back again? I flicked an imperial coin and it said we would win. I love books. Such pretty colors. Oh, cobwebs. Are we going to be able to pickpocket him this time? Yes. Why did it work this time? I don't know. Nobody? Nothing? What a, what a lie. Must be a big rat with a sword, right? You thought you saw something? But then you decided you didn't really? How am I going to get through here without being seen? I guess I could just knock everybody out. That just seems so... Unprofessional. By the Emperor, who was that? Oh, cobwebs. Must have been my fault. Oh, cobwebs. I love books. Must have been a big rat with a sword. We have the archer comes back this way as well. But now we don't have to interact with them. What does their icon look like? A scroll, okay. Like bazillions of scrolls around here. I guess I want to see what's on this desk. I flicked an imperial coin and it said we would win. That was it. I don't got it very well then. I 
guess I just want to hide it in amongst all the other things you can read. Alright. I was not expecting that to be it. I was expecting that maybe to be a clue as to where it is. I felt sure there was another floor below this. I love books. Such pretty covers. The old cobwebs. So maybe I'm wrong. Oh, there's a ladder there, but I guess it's probably just going to go anywhere, right? I love books. Probably just there to... Oh, cobwebs. Oh, get off. Well, that's my duty done. Oh, cobwebs. Here comes the archer. I thought I saw another stair down when I was up there, but I guess not. I love books. Such pretty covers. I love books. Such pretty covers. Kinda of like to see if there's stuff to read in the middle. I love books. But surely to do that we're gonna have to uh, start knocking people out. Enemies of the Empire for many years, even without a great deal of contact between the two, the Alchemists were the original rulers of the Northern Lands and beyond. Their true origins remain obscure to this day, though by some means they survived without the influence of the Great Hammer during the days of darkness and fear. Their greatest disputes have been with the precursors over territories and the firm mirrors over technologies that have been stolen or misused. They are the newest order of the Empire to date, and the hardest to integrate into the Imperium. Regrettably, they do not bring with them the bulk of Northern tribesmen, who regard them as traitors who abandon them in their fight against the Hammerite oppressors. Though much is believed to still remain secret, more and more small city festivals are taking place designed to cast a new light on these brothers from the East. These involve displays of alchemist technologies and learning new trade opportunities and offers of land. In return for new headquarters at Capernaum and various buildings elsewhere throughout Athlon, the Alchemists have assisted by dispatching a pioneering force of Imperial Colonials to foreign lands that are, to this day, being charted in earnest on the other side of the world. Though the locations of the old cities of the Alchemists remain obscure, the new harbour town of Dayport is rapidly becoming a bustling metropolis with a life, culture and character of its own. Communications between the old world and the new, however, remain very poor given the treacherous sea, the treacherous sea conditions that only Alchemist ships seem able to cross. Just, just valuables. I love books. Such now, is this noisy? No. My spiritual settings tingling. It's one of the white devils. Alright, let's knock them out so I can check out the middle. I don't think I could possibly check out the middle without knocking them out. I know it's you. I love this one isn't waking up. Such pretty covers. Play the game and fight. I love books. Such pretty covers. I love books. Such pretty covers. Shivan, I know it's you. I slept in the old point and it said you would win. I mean, you're right, it is me. Team leader, oh yeah, we've got the team leader. Okay. There's only the one more guy that comes down here. There's only the one more guy. Seems like good good language. Hmm. 
And I could sneak past him, but by this point, why bother? Oh, the black veil falls upon me. The black veil given by the white team. Alright, now we have the freedom of this place. Or maybe we can't read this stuff, maybe it's just stuff to steal. Our mages have finally mastered the most important Imperial Magister skills. Manipulation of Universium Compendium Molecular Energy such as creating a Phasium handheld blue hammer out of thin air, propounding thine enemy into submission. Proven mostly successful. Sadly, Brother Thespiuso disappeared as, instead of pulling a hammer out of the air, he pulled himself in and became air. We must try to bring him back during tomorrow's session. On a humorous note, Brother Aximium created a hammer but could not grasp it due to lack of concentration and it still had the material properties of air so that it remained hanging there until it dissolved on the next day. Throwing a knockout hammer at thine enemy, proven successful, although some acolytes chose to create a gear instead of a hammer. Bonus points for creativity. Reincarnation. Proven only partially successful due to lack of skill in the molecular manipulation. Knocked out acolytes who have already mastered the facium hammer are able to wake up again, but only as ghostly forms of their former selves, walking about to and fro, mostly composed of air, Nearly hollow and unable to bear arms. Wears off after 24 hours. Slightly better than getting knocked out anyway, I say. The Metal Aura, Ferium Murus, more so than any other of our allies, have brought great advancements to the Hammerite Imperium. They pride themselves on power, leadership, and inventivity. It is stated in the historical documents that the Ferium Murus, named after their industrial capital, evolved through a desire to grow and develop, chasing away the darkness, as the writers of the time had written it. The Metal Order share a tense but successful relationship with the mainland, recruiting many youngsters after having opened their doors to non ferron born acolytes only in recent history. Their older history is one of constant war-making, and industry too detailed to provide here, but they represent the most forward-thinking of all Hammerite Orders. Enemies of the Ferrum have been eager to suggest that the Metal Order arose as a result of a schism, a split with the Hammerites, owing to some great mistake of the past for which they are destined to atone. Though it seems natural their conquered foes will produce such blasphemy, the precursors have been unable to re-educate some cultures to the contrary, and therefore the roots of dissension still exist. To this day the Metal Order are regarded as having the worst reputation abroad for acts of cruelty, but the best for making progress in many areas. In the year 917, the Ferrum nation underwent a great revolution of industrial and political dimensions. During this time, the Ferrum Republic of the Iron Gear, the Ferrum Nation of the Free People, rose to power in a coup that eliminated the previously existing Ferrum Royalist Order. Okay, and that one was nothing. Alright, well I guess that is the entirety of this floor that uh, we have covered. Well, I'll keep flipping it. Maybe you'll have read the wrong side. Did I read that? Yes. Let's just have one last look around, because otherwise this... Because if that's it, then I think we're done. We've got... We've got all the icons. Yeah, I've been, I've been to that table. I mean, unless there's something on the floor above I missed. Where's that ladder? It's not going to be hiding anything, right? But we can climb it anyway. Oh, well. Apparently it's not even climbable. Well, he didn't hear me, thankfully. See the only guard left remaining, then? Right, the other guy we... Encountered. Well, you know what? We need to destroy these spells, right? The hammer spell scroll. Where's the slow enemy scroll? Come on, come on. I love Such pretty covers. Wait a minute. Oh, the white devil. Against the rules, it's your own bloody spells. Also, give me your money. 
There's nothing at these lamps, right? They're just strange. Hey, as you guess, it's decorative lighting lights the room up sufficiently. So that was a great library. It's a little uh, anticlimactic after all the lower areas below, but I guess we could have come here much sooner. It feels a little strange that the only key was locked away in the tower. I mean, you know, maybe that was their team's security measure. But I guess we're done. We did not kill. All objectives complete. We have returned to the white team base. Right, the door in the southeast corner. Right, right, right. It does clarify. Is that door we need to go back to? So, I guess it would have been possible to go around and read or, read or sneak all that stuff. Um, without... Brain, without knocking everybody out. I did not think they were going this way. Thankfully they are blind. Alright, well we haven't done a 100% perfect job in, of, of sneaking, but uh, you know, done pretty well. Done pretty well for ourselves. Didn't even use too much of the equipment we had. We got spells and mines and things all to spare. And uh, here we are. Maybe soon we shall go from uh, there. What was it? It would said the winners would get a tour of Athlon Island. In the Imperial City. Looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be able to mantle this, right? A little surprised that we can. We're hearing the, the blue guys. I'm just gonna run out on the wall and maybe get another screenshot or two. Definitely feels wrong that we can do this. Huh. Maybe it's not a good opportunity for a screenshot. I guess this corner might be the place. I don't know, we'll pick something. Oops, well, we have healing potions. We can fix that. And here we are. White team with all the icons and proudly holding our own aloft. I think. Whoa, lava waves underground 
Do these? Oh, who knows what's happening there? Very cool, very cool imagery, very cool mission success video. Alright, well, how did we do? I'm sure we missed a ton of loot, right? Well, less than a thousand, that's better than I expected. There's two more secrets hiding away somewhere. That I guess are not part of the, uh, the chain. Uh, for what's his name. So maybe that thing I thought was a window was a secret? I don't know. Alright, well... Two airborne knockouts. That was two particularly that I jumped so as to not alert the guys. The guys out in the snow. To not risk having them turn around in front of me. What is discovered by enemies too? Yeah, that's fair. No kills, as, as required. You know, I think that means we're uh, done here. You know, uh, I know they bl originally planned the Grand Campaign or something, um, but that mission stands really well on its own. I mean, I thought the entire setup was a little, I don't know, cheesy, a little Harry potter -y. It's Oh, you're a student, it's uh, the final exam, we got this kind of competition, we're splitting the teams, blah blah blah. But, it was an awful lot of fun to play, so, you know, I can certainly forgive a fair amount of cheesiness uh, in a good cause. Really enjoyed that. Um, I kind of wish I'd managed to do purple before the end because, uh, yeah, silver and black definitely seem to be 
the more difficult, the more kind of end game encounters. But then of course I was backtracking for the secret anyway, and that required backtracking back into the cathedral. It's a little weirdly hidden that secret in terms of how it fits into how you progress to the mission. And then we had the note of how the black leader was hunting me specifically and nothing came of that because we were able to sneak past them. I don't know. I felt like I felt like again it was setting up for something else to happen that didn't happen, but I guess if it's part of a campaign they maybe expect things to happen following it. I don't know what the story was gonna be. But anyway, definitely time for me to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope it was enjoyable. I had a lot of fun. So, uh, I guess I'll see you here for the next mission. Whenever that is.